Hi, I'm Greg, and this is Scott. So we're going to assemble the Go Bike Forte. Um, you're going to find possibly the battery in a separate box, or it could be in the same box as your, your bike. For this type of bike, because it is a little bit difficult to assemble, we highly recommend you take it to a local bike shop to get assembled. Next, we're going to uh, remove all the packaging uh, from the bike. So you're going to want to cut these zip ties. You're going to want to be careful um, from not trying to cut any of your housing for your brakes, your shifter, or your electrical wires for your bike. You're going to open your parts and toolbox. You're going to find your pedals. You're going to find your mounting brackets for your rear fenders. You're going to find your headset cap zip ties, your front light, your chain, your toolkit, and your charger that we'll need later. So we're going to uh, pump up the tires. You're going to remove the valve cap from the valve. You're going to make sure the tire is uh, pretty centered on the rim to where the bead is even all the way around. You're going to take your pump. You're going to have the lever actuated all the way up. And you're going to push it onto your valve stem. You can push from the tire side to get to push the valve or the pump head onto the valve and then push the lever down. And then you can start airing up your tire. First, we're going to install the wheels onto the rear part of the frame. You're gonna find uh, directional arrows on the tires. Um, you're gonna want those to where the directional arrow is pointing forward and the tail light on the back. So you're gonna remove the tape from each side on the axle, which is holding on a pin you're going to find on the axle which is going to line up with a slot in the, in the hub for the rear wheels. First you're going to uninstall uh, the nut from each side. Now we're going to install the rear wheels on the rear frame. So you're going to take uh, this and line it up with a slot on the rear hub. And then you're going to install the washer and the nut on the axle with the flat part of the nut facing the, the hub. Then you're going to take your wrench and tighten it down. And we're going to flip it over and tighten it down the other side. So first we're going to install the handlebars to get them out of the way so they're not uh, just dangling here. So we're going to install the cap to the headset. It's just going to go on top. And then you're going to install your handlebars here. Um, what you are going to check for is you have a middle uh, minimum insertion uh, line here. You're going to want that to be inside the fork. So just kind of eyeball the that they're lined up for now until we install the front wheel. Line up the handlebars. You're going to have uh, serrated edges here. You're going to make sure that it's kind of centered and then tighten down the clamp on the face plate. There's going to be a bolt on the front. Now we're going to remove the hardware to be able to mount the rear frame to the front frame. So you're going to remove the nut from each of these uh, bolts. You're going to put the front frame mounting on the outside of the rear and then you're going to put your nuts and bolts through to mount them together. And make sure 
that everything is lined up to where it is not crooked. Then we're going to take our tools and start tightening them up. So next we're going to install your front fender and your front light. Uh, you might need to uh, flip over the mounting um, bracket for the front light depending on if it has room for uh, sitting with the fender and the front rack. Okay, so you're going to put your supplied bolt through the bracket. You're going to put the fender on the front fork. You're going to thread the bolt in through the fork. The nut on the back of the bolt. Take your open end wrench and tighten down the nut. And you're going to want to check to make sure the fender is straight. Okay. Next, we're going to install the front wheel. So you're going to loosen up the axle nuts to where you have some space on each side to install them into the fork and you're gonna pull out the outer two washers, one with a clip that's gonna install into the fork, and then you're gonna have one with a slot that's gonna sit in the fork legs. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure the one with the slot is pointing down. You're gonna install it into the fork legs. And first you're gonna remove uh, your little pad spacer here. it into the, the fork and you're going to tighten down both sides. And to make sure that the wheel is seated all the way in the fork, you can put some pressure down on the top of the fork and then tighten these down. Check your fender, make sure it's not hitting your front wheel. So we need to uh, hook up the cable for the motor in your front wheel. You're going to look for an arrow on each of these connectors and you're going to line them up and then push them together. And then you'll need a zip tie to zip tie the wire to the front fork. Okay. Now we're going to install uh, the wire onto the front light. You're going to take the dotted um, white lined wire, which is going to be the positive one, and install onto the positive one, which is going to be on the left side of the light. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to check the stem, make sure it's lined up with the front wheel. So you can loosen up your bolt here to where you have a little bit of movement and line it up with that front wheel to where it's straight. Make sure it's tight. You can use the front wheel and the handlebars to make sure everything's tight. If the stem rotates when you hold on to the front wheel, then you need to tighten it up further. And then you're going to put the plug in the top 
to hide the bolt. So now we're going to hook up your rear taillight wires. It might be easiest to undo your light so you can see which wire goes to which uh, connector. So you would take your dotted line uh, wire and hook that up to the positive on your taillight. And then the other one to the negative side. Now, now we can remount your taillight to the mounting bracket. So you're going to take your screws. Now we're going to mount the rear brake to the mounting bracket. You're going to take uh, these two bolts and remove them from your uh, brake adapter. Make sure your wire for your rear brake is out of the way, and then we can zip tie that uh, after we're done mounting the brake. You're going to remove your pad spacer here, get that out of the way. You might need to loosen up the bolts on your brake caliper to build um, a line with the rotor. Then you're going to tighten down your two side bolts. And then you'll want to check to make sure your rear brake caliper is aligned to where it's not rubbing on your rear brake rotor. Now you can zip tie your wire for your rear tail light to um, the mount for your rear basket. You're going to leave the wire on the bottom of um, the mounting. I'm going to set up your rear derailleur. So you have two um, screws right here. You have your high and low limit. Your high, which is going to be the top one, is going to adjust where this pulley is to your hardest gear here. You want to make sure this pulley and this gear are lined up. If it is past it, you want to, um, if it's past the gear here, to where the chain would come off the outside of it, you would tighten it down to where this pulley moves further along, and you want to line them up. Okay. Once that's lined up, you can check your low, which is you can push the derailleur in and make sure these two pulleys are aligned. And if it is past it, you would want to uh, screw down your bottom bolt here, and that'll help you line them up. If it is uh, not allowing you to go all the way to that last gear, you would unthread that screw, so going counterclockwise. Okay. Once you have that set up, we're going to hook up our rear derailleur cable. You're going to take your derailleur cable housing here, feed it through the frame. Over the top, you're going to take your cable, you're going to feed it through your barrel adjuster. It's going to come out here, you're going to feed it through uh, this little opening right there, that little hole. Once you have it installed through the hole on the derailleur, 
you're gonna take your uh, the plate and the, the nut once you get it. So you're gonna use the one with the little serrated edge here. That's gonna sit on the cable. And the cable is gonna go on the left side of your bolt. Now we're going to install your chain on your rear derailleur. You're going to find one end that has the pin sticking out. That is going to be the side you're going to leave um, at the back. You're going to feed in the other side first. You're going to want to make sure the pin is going to be facing towards you. And then you're going to feed this through the rear derailleur here. It's going to go around your bottom pulley on the inside of this plate here. So feed around it. It's going to go on the bottom side of your top pulley. Make sure you stay inside this plate on the other side. And go around that top pulley and then around your freewheel. Now you're going to connect both pieces together. You're going to put it in place, it's going to kind of snap together. There we go. Now we're going to push the pin into the chain. So you're going to take your tool, you're going to put the pin side on this side of the, the chain tool, where this is going to push the pin on the chain link into the other side. open it up enough where you can get in. And then this side, there's going to be a little pin that's going to line up and push into your chain link to keep it in place. And you're going to start pushing the pin into your chain link. Push your pin in so it's almost flush with that outer part of the chain. It's going to have a little bit of pressure. Yeah, a little bit of a decrease in pressure when it's all the way in. Check both sides of the chain, make sure it's all the way through, and then make sure it's moving freely. And then you can install it onto your chain ring here. Okay. Now we're going to install the pedals. You're going to look on the ends, there's going to be one with a R on it, which is going to be your right side pedal, so this side with your chain ring, and the other side is going to have an L. So the right side is going to go on um, normal, righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. So you're going to turn it uh, clockwise. And it'll thread in. And then you can use your pedal wrench, which is going to be your 15 millimeter, to tighten it down the rest of the way. Okay. And then we're going to do the left side. Now we're going to install the left side pedal. This side, you're actually going to thread it in the opposite direction. So you're going to go counterclockwise. So you're going to turn it left. And once you start get it started threaded, you can use your wrench and back pedal to tighten it all the way up. We're going to install the rear basket here. So you're going to take out your bag so you can mount it onto the rear of your frame. Set that aside. We're going to mount this. You're going to have this is going to be the, the front of the basket, so the one with the higher bolt, and then you're going to have the lower. So 
So you're going to remove the hardware from your frame. You know, make sure everything's aligned to where the basket is straight with, even on each side. And you're going to tighten up all your bolts for your rear basket. Now we can remove the hardware here to mount your side fenders. So when installing the fenders, you're going to find a shorter side. That's going to be the front, and this side will be the rear. So you're going to put your mounting bracket, you're going to remove the hardware, and then it's going to mount on the bottom side of it. So you're actually going to remove the nuts from each side. Oops. We're going to mount these to your side of your basket. I'm going to use a different tool to tighten up these. So you're going to mount those to where they're straight with your wheel. You're going to use your open end wrench on the bottom. Now we're going to install your rear basket bag here. So you're going to have the Go Bike logo facing the back. So we're going to push that down into your basket. And then use the Velcro to mount it to the basket. Now we're going to install your battery. Make sure the key's in it and it's turned to the unlocked position. Then you're going to take it and you're going to slide it down onto the mounting rail. And then you can lock it and take the key. Now we can mount the seat post into the, the frame. You're going to want to use the cam action to tighten it down, but you want to make sure that the other side is tight enough. So you're going to tighten down this side to get it tight enough to where it takes some effort to get it to, to tighten down. You make sure the, the collar is also centered to where it doesn't hit your battery. So you're going to use the lever to tighten it down and you're probably going to have to face this downward so that it doesn't hit your battery and make sure that the seat post is tight enough to where the seat does not rotate. So to charge your go bike you're going to use your uh, supplied charger. You're going to open up the port here on your charger or your battery so it should be out of the way and you're going to find the arrow on your charger and that's going to point towards the towards the back of the bike and you're going to plug that in and you're not going to want to leave this plugged in to charge for more than eight hours now we're going to remove the hardware from the frame so you're going to use your supplied allen wrench loosen these up Then we're going to install the front basket. So we're going to make sure that this is off to the side before we mount it. So we're just going to 
hand tighten them until we have them all in there, and then we're going to line it up. We're going to check to make sure they're all tight. And we should be able to turn the handlebars without anything catching. This is your display for your Forza and your Forte. To turn your display on, press and hold the M button for two seconds. Your display lights up. Here you'll find your battery power, your current odometer, your speed, and your pedal assist. Right now, we see pedal assist in number one. As you increase those, you'll see that increase to two, standard, three, standard, four, power, and number five, power. We're gonna decrease that back down to one. You can change your screen brightness by entering the setup mode. To do that, hold the top and down arrow buttons together for two seconds. We see PO1. So PO1 right now is set to number one, which is display level one. If you hit up button here on the left side, you go to display two and display three. Display three will be your maximum brightness. If you like display three, we can press the top and down buttons together. We're now in the brightest display. Your bike display might come defaulted as kilometers per hour. If it does, there's a simple fix for that. Press and hold the up and down buttons together for two seconds until you get to the programming mode. Hit the end button once, hit enter to PO2. You'll see here set at kilometers per hour. Press up one time. Now we're defaulted to miles per hour. Press and hold the top and bottom buttons together for two seconds. You're out of programming mode and now we're defaulted to miles per hour. This red button is your throttle kill switch. Right now our throttle is engaged, as you can plainly see here. If we press the button one time, you'll hear a click. By doing that, you've now disengaged your throttle 